We're on Zoom live, Tubishvad with Eliakim Kingslinger, the Eliakim the Dream, the most eligible man in the Jewish world. Anyhow, don't give up, man. This is to all you 50 year olds out there. All you 40, 50 year olds, even 60, don't give up. And don't make your joy contingent upon a woman. A man who makes his joy in life contingent upon a woman will be miserable. Anyhow, so it's true for women too. You know, and you met, goes both ways. So hey, say hi, Elikim, where, where are you? Um, please unmute. We can't hear you. You're muted. Say something. Say spaghetti. Okay, anyhow, so um, share screen. So we're gonna do, it's Tupishva today. So we're having a little wine. Uh, Admit, Elia Kim is back in. Hey, Elia Kim, say something to the world. Uh, you think I might be able to find a better spot because there is no alternate site parking today. I'm just a meter. Alternate parking, Manhattan, Lachaim. Okay, so we're so. I already said the blessing for you guys out there might think that the guy without the kippah doesn't say a blessing. God forbid. I don't care what you think about me. I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Usually. Anyhow, so we're going to, it's not about me now. It's about Rabbi Ashlag and it's about Eliakim. Eliakim is going to be falling asleep soon and he'll going to wake up in an hour later. We'll still be talking. Okay. So here is the text. Um, now, this is very difficult stuff. It's the Malo Tesulam, Malo Tesulam by Rabbi Yehuda Tzvi Brandvine, Blessed Memories, commentary on the Tikkuni Zohar, the key book to the Zohar, in the 18th chapter, Tikkun Shmona page 365. Uh, anyhow, I was talking about, this is a cheer of Mikhail Maor. He is one of the true Kabbalists of the, like, just like the ones of the previous generation. Um, he's not, he's, um, he's pretty nister. He's not like uh, on Facebook, YouTube and all that stuff and uh, you know, bandied about on social media. And he's, he was the top student of Rabbi Avram Brenvan, the Stretna Rebbe of Ashlag, um, Stretna Ashlag. And uh, so, so he, whatever, uh, you can trust the source. I don't know if you can trust me, but let's try to translate it into English. So it's talking about gadlut. So there are three kinds of gadlut. Now, what is gadlut, first of all? Gadlut is the greatness. It's the state of being a complete partsuf uh, of the 10 sfirot. Okay, what's a partsuf? A partsuf is a divine image or mask of God. Modern Hebrew uh, slang, it means a face. As you would say, Sat, as you would say to a kid who flashes an obstinate face when he doesn't want to do his chore, you say, Alta Seli Partsufim. Don't make, make faces like you don't want to, you know, oh, mom, I don't want to do it. God, <coughs> so Partsuf is one of God's faces. Um, I just thought it was interesting that modern Hebrew slang uses the word also. Um, anyhow, so Partsuf is a face of God, a mask of God. Uh, literally 10 sphere in right, left, and middle columns, and so forth. But God is absolute oneness. So what does he need partsufim for? What does he need this pantheon of father and mother, Abba, Ima, Zeran, Pinukva? It's not a pantheon. We're not pray we never pray to the partsufim. Uh, we pray through the partsufim. We pray through the sphere We use We connect to the upper world through the intermediary, because God's oneness is, 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 this is not 
made up from the Kabbalah. This is from the Bible. In the Bible, it says, uh, no man shall see my face and live. You, and it says, you did not see my, uh, you heard a voice, but you didn't see my face come from the fire at Mount Sinai in Parshat Vayetchanan. And God, God, one of the God the things we know about God is he's incorporeal and he's infinite and he's beyond. And you, we can't talk about God. We can know that Maimonides says this is an absolute, complete oneness, unlike any oneness in this world. And that's about it that we can say about God in his essence. Um, but he reveals his attributes in different forms to relate to the world. He said, to, after the golden calf, God said, let me, Moses said, let me see your face. And what did God say? He said, Ani Adonai, Adonai el rachum v'chanun, that God is uh, uh, merciful and compassionate and, and patient and true and God of truth and jealousy and it's all of this stuff so those those are like uh could be described as different faces of god face of face of comp compassion face of uh, of anger not godly anger wrath i guess wrath is the word no there's no anger but um anyhow so so he reveals his attributes in different forms in order to relate to the world so technically i said a partsuf is ten sfirot arranged in three triads one on top of each other they form three vertical columns right left and middle this is the form of the tree of life or in the anthropomorphic sense the bilateral symmetry reminiscent of human body with arms legs and torso and feet so uh, god forbid did i mention head yeah with a human form body with with head arms legs and feet and torso like the bible talks about describe the shira shirim the holy holy of holies talks about describing God in, in a terms of the human body. So uh, it's an anthropomorphism. It's, it's like a way of understanding something beyond from our own perspective. Um, so so uh, there are forms that hint at God, how God runs the world. Okay, so Gadlut is the greatness of a complete partsuf. A partsuf is six firot, and when it grows, it's 10 firot. Uh, that's called Gadlut. You know, partsuf has a head, it's in the state of gadlut. It has the upper three sfirot filled in mochin, the brain power, the life force. That's, uh, and then the head unites with the seven lower sfirot of the body, so to speak. That's gadlut. It's in contradistinction to katnut, smallness, where the partsuf only has seven sfirot from the, from the chest and below. Okay. And Elia, are you asleep, Elia Kim? Yes, I believe I put you asleep. Okay. Uh, gadlut, you have Kadlut and Katnut. Gadlut, ten full spherot, the head and the body, Katnut, just the body. Um, and the upper three, what's with the upper three? They're in potential. Um, so let's uh, get over here. So what are these parts of fame? You have Arechanpin, the greater countenance, the long face. You have Abba, the father, Ima, the mother, Zeranpin, the small face of the lesser countenance, and Nukva, the female. There are other major parts of fame, such as Yisrael Saba and Tvuna, Israel, the grandfather, and reason. Israel Saba is the grand, is the, Israel, the grandfather, and Tvuna is reason. These are dread, these are parts of fame that dress the lower seven spherot of Abba Enima. So Abba Enima, ten full spherot, and uh, they're dressed by Israel Saba and Tivuna, which are ten spherot, each of them, but they're dressing the seven lower spherot of Abba Enima. Arechanpin, what's Arechanpin? It's the greater countenance. I don't. I, I used to say the macro prosopis because I saw that was the way um, in introduction to Kabbalah of the Tanya by um, Rabbi Shochet. Uh, Emmanuel Shochet uses the word micro prosopis and macro prosopis. The macro prosopis, the big face, greater countenance. Micro prosopis, small face, zeran pin. Um, that I, I used to say that because it sounds cool and whatever, it seems to be accurate. However, I looked in Wikipedia and apparently, apparently Christian Kabbalah uses these terms, the transla Christian translations and their own uh, uh, interpretation of Kabbalah uses these terms. And this is a Jewish Kabbalah and from a Jewish sources. So I don't uh, want to mix it up with the Christian Kabbalah, which I, I'm not, you know, knocking it. Um, I'm just saying that it's not part of our world and I don't understand it. 
Um, and of course, Jews are number one. Anyhow, so that being said, uh, every human being who fulfills the seven Noachid laws is number one also, and no better than uh, Moshele and Beryl. So, okay, back to the subject. So the greater countenance is Arachanpin, the long fist. That's the sphere of Keter, the crown. Just as Keter is the highest of the 10 spherot, the greater countenance is the highest of the five parts of fame. Sometimes Kabbalah discusses Atzik Yomen, which is a, it's an upper level of Keter, suffice to say. Any questions? Ali Akim. Uh, is, it, is it somewhat clear so far? Well, what's the long face and what's the small face? It's a, there's a parts of him. The long face is Arachanpin. It's the, the parts of associated with Keter. Um, the small face is Zer Anpin. It tr literally translates Zer Anpin as small face. We, uh, a nice way of saying it is the, um, the minor, um, the lesser countenance. Again, a partsuf is a mask or a face. It's a, 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 another beautiful way to translate partsuf is divine image. A divine image is a partsuf. I think it's a Greek word. There you go. So the, the main partsufim are Arachanpin and Keter. Abba in Chochma is the father. Uh, Ima is the mother. That's in Bina. Uh, Zeranpin is from Chesed down to Yesod. Six lower spherot, and then the final seventh spherot, Malchut, is a part of unto itself. That's like the Shechina, that's Malchut. Malchut is called Nukva, it means female. And Malchut is also the tenth ten spherot of Malchut is comprised by two spherot of Leah and Rachel. So Zeranpin is ten spherot. And when, when Zeranpin is in the full state of ten spherot, in the state of greatness, again, greatness, ten spherot, Katnut, uh, Gadlut, greatness, ten spherot. Katnut, smallness, is only just the lower seven. It also could be when they're all tucked into the lower three, or even when it's super katnut, when they're when when the malchut is just one little point below the world of Yesod of Zaranpin and the world of Atzilut. That's uh, that's further information that you don't have already, so I'm gonna go back to the basics here. Um, Arachanpin, Keter, Zaranpin of uh, Arachanpin, the great the greater countenance, Keter. Ima, Abba, mother, Chochma. Ima, Abba, father, Abba, father, Chochma. Ima, mother, Bina. Zeranpin from Chesed to Yesod. And Malchut is uh, sovereignty. Malchut is the seventh, the lowest of the ten sphere. So uh, you have a sphere and you have a partsuf. What's the difference, Eli Kim? What do you think? Well, well, one is uh, a, a partsuf is a bunch of spheros together. Exactly, a partsuf is ten spheros together in a in a in a certain the form of the tree of life, you know, right, left, and middle. Uh, uh, the first, the upper three, the middle three, lower three, and, and mouth. Right. Um, one sec. There's one sphera, which is basically light and vessel that contains light and emits light. Here, I'll say the sphere of uh, Malchut. The sphere of Malchut is or sovereignty or kingship is Malchut. I like the word sovereignty. It just sounds good. Kingship is not musical for me. Sovereignty is Malchut. It's the lowest of the 10 spherot located at the bottom of the middle column of the diagram of a part surface. The sphere is a spiritual building block of all physical and metaphysical reality. It is a purely spiritual concept of a vessel that contains light and emits light. Sfirot, sfirot, the power of sfira, are vessels for God's light, meaning they're vessels for God's wisdom and bestowal. Again, now I'm defining Rabbi Ashlag's definition of light. What is light? Light is a physical prop thing, photons and what's, you know, something in physics in the universe. We're talking about something that's completely spiritual. So that's just a hint at what it really is. So Rabbi Ashlag brings it into more spiritual language. The branch language is language of this world, of physics and biology and our physical descriptions with, with our five sense, senses. That's called branch language. God's nose, God's eyes. Um, like Maimonides talks a lot about it and more in Nebuchim. 
but um, so to say God has light, God doesn't have any light. He's beyond phys physics. So what, what does it mean light? So Rabbi Ashlag says with the inside, the root language of the branch language of light, the root language is the God's wisdom and bestowal. That's, that's light. Light is, he just gives his light. So it's all about giving. So, um, so that explain a vessel which contains God's light to God's light is whatever he gives to us from his infinity. Um, <clears throat> the force coming from the infinity. There's 10 spherot of the head, and they're also associated with the organs of the head. So the upper three spherot are the cranium, the meninges, and the brain. And the severed lower spherot are the uh, organs of the body, are the uh, rest of the body. Rest of the body. Um, Oh, no, no, sorry. In the head itself, I didn't put the seven lower because you have the eye sockets, the uh, ears, which is Bina, the nose, which is, I don't remember, and the mouth, which is Malchut. Okay. So now let's go back. Now that we have a little, that's a little primer review of the terminology. So this, Michael Moore says there's three kinds of gadlut, where the parts of, of Abba, the parts of, of Ima, and the two parts of Ima of Yisrael and Sab and Tavuna, they all ascend to the head of the parts of, of Arich Anpin. So the other thing about, so below you have Abba and Ima, right? And those are ten two two different parts of him connected together, you know, side by side in a state of unity. Abba, one, Abba on the right, Ima on the left. Ah, the, what is Israel Saban Tavunas? The seven lower spherot. It's of complete parts of ten spherot that takes, that covers, or is, is the garment, so to speak, for the seven lower spherot of Abba and Ima. That's called Yisrael Saba and Tavuna. Okay. What are, what are these four, Abba, Ima, Yisrael, Saba, and Tivuna, what do they do? When they're state of Gadlut, they ascend to the head of the parts of Arachanpin. So basically, they're ascending from Chochem and Bina up to Keter. So a brief summary. We're focusing on the head of Arachanpin. Uh, are you asleep or you want to ask something or say something? You're asleep. Okay. At the time, it's not nice to, he's not captive here. He can turn this off. But he asked me to talk him to sleep. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. All right. So at a time, anybody listening to this anytime, whenever in 100 years from now, feel free to fall well, well asleep. Uh, Rabbi Adin Steinsoltz once told me that uh, often we do more in our sleep, achieve, accomplish more in our sleep than we're achieving while we're awake. He was always uh, overworked and underslept. So so anyhow, uh, head of Arachanpin is a head. It's a ten spherot. The three upper spherot of Arachanpin are the head, right? Time of katnut, smallness. That's when Malchut ascends to Bina in the head of Arachanpin. Malchut ascends to Bina in the head of Arachanpin. Then Malchut is located in his mouth and ascends to his eye sockets. So my question is, which Malchut is this? I have to ask Mikhail, um, which Malchut of Arich? I think it's the Malchut of the Ten Spirit of Arachanpin. Requires further study. So basically, we're talking about Malchut ascending to Bina in the head of Arachanpin. Then Malchut will be located in his mouth, in the, the mouth of this partsuf. And Malchut is in the mouth and ascends up to the eyes. Eyes are, have to do with wisdom. The Arizal, Rabbi Isaac Luria, said eyes have to do with wisdom. This is coming from the Bible where it calls the, the 70 elders in the, under the uh, um, 70 elders of the court of Israel, presided over by Moses. Uh, the 70 elders were the eyes of the community. It says specifically the eyes of the community talking about the, the wise man. 
So wisdom has to do with the eyes. Also, it just makes sense. The eyes are in front of the brain. So that's like wisdom in the brain uh, coming out of the eyes of the parts of. These are all lights. These are all lights and vessels and the body is just an anthropomorphism, but the, the, the lights are within the body of the partsuf and they come out of the orifices of the head and from the, the belly button and so forth. And they, they're they within and surrounding. There's light all around this vision and they, they, they go up and down. It's a whole celestial electrical engineering to explain the secrets of creation. So Malchut ascends to Bina in the head of Arachanpin, then Malchut is located in the mouth and it goes up to the eyes, eye sockets specifically. This causes, why not the eyes? Why the eye sockets? I'm gonna ask Mikhail. So this causes, so what happens when Malchut goes up above? Okay, there's a part, there's a, there's a diaphragm. There's a, a, a divider a masach, screen, divider, between the upper three and the lower seven. It's reminiscent of the diaphragm in the body. So when Malchud comes up above the diaphragm to the upper three, then what? Bina has to go down. This causes Bina to leave the head of Arachanpin and go down to the body. This is called Simpsum Shani. Simpsum Shani is when the Malchut ascends to Bina. When Malchut ascends up to Bina above the uh, Parsa, the diaphragm or the Masach between the upper three and the lower seven, the Malchut goes up and Bina is gonna have to go down because so to speak, space, there's no space here. It's a metaphysical construct, but it will take, like when you have something going up, it's some, there's gonna have, something's gonna have to come down or go further up or whatever, move. It's gonna have to move. So what it does is in this case, it goes down. So Bina will thus, when Malchut ascends to the eye sockets, then Bina in the head of Arachan Pin has to go down to the body. This is called Simpsum Sheni. This level of understanding has two opposite qualities. Uh, Bina um, has two opposite qualities. You have the upper three spherot of Bina, that's chafetz chesed, desiring kindness. Therefore, they remained as concealed kindnesses. Uh, not, they don't, they only influence. Chafetz chayim, reveal, uh, concealed kindness is only influencing, giving, bestowing. Again, concealed kindness is all about influencing, mashpia, which means to give or bestow. This is a, talks about the concept that Rabbi Ashlag discusses that I haven't really learned yet, the mafursamot. So anyhow, in this, it basically it's a place that's no struggle or work, but everything is complete. There's no darkness or light in this place. In the, we're talking about concealed kindnesses. Um, in the place of concealed kindness, there's no struggle, there's no work, everything is complete. Uh, it's all chafetz chesed. Concealed kindness and chafetz chesed are similar, uh, we go hand in hand. Um, it says in the Bible somewhere, chafetz, God is chafetz chesed. So we say, what is that? That's a total oneness where there's no dark or light, there's work or toil. It's like the level of Shabbat. It's a spiritual state of being not limited to time and place, not limited in any respect at all. Let's go back. And understand, go understand what's happening. Malchut goes up, Bina goes down, right? That's called Simpson Shani. Bina has the upper three and the lower seven. They're opposite qualities. The upper three spherot of Bina are Chafetz Chesed. Let's see what I said about that. So you look at Micha, chapter seven, verse 18. It's one of God's attributes is Chafetz Chesed. God desires kindness. Um, Yeah, in the upper three spirit of Bina, it's all chafetz chesed. It's all concealed kindness, desiring kindness. Upper three is a state of total unity and oneness, chafetz chesed. Not limited in any respect, just mashpia, just given. So the upper three 
in the upper three sfirot, in every capacity, the characteristic of, of chafetz chesed, desire and kindness, in that place, there's no tzimtzum, there's no limitation. There's in limitation, constriction, uh, tzimtzum bet, the second tzimtzum we're talking about when Malchut descends to Bina, uh, the Masach, ascends from Malchut to Bina and forces Bina to go down below. So we, this is a detail we should have said before, that when Bina, when Malchut goes up to Bina, it causes the Masach to go down to the lower level. Um, sorry, the Masach, sorry, the Masach and Malchut goes up. And it causes, and when the Masach, in Malchut has a Masach, a screen, like at the bottom. And the, when, this, when the divider goes up, and Malchut goes up, it causes the, the Bina, in the above the upper masach to go down below the below the so they have the masach and malchut below you have another masach kind of like the diaphragm um so the malchut below and the feet go up and the di and the bina above causes the masach of the diaphragm to go down below that's called simsim sheni um simsum Limitation, constriction. Uh, again, we talked about that. A masach. What's a masach? It's a screen, a divider. Like I said, I'm re re repeating myself. Divides be a bit repetition, and people didn't get it. They want to hear it again. Um, so you need to repeat a certain amount and review while we're studying until we get it clear. So ma masach is a screen or divider. It divides between the upper and lower worlds. For the upper three spheroes uh, from the lower three spheroes. So Malchut ascends to Bina, in the Masach and Malchut ascends, and then Bina will descend below the Masach. So I guess here it sounds like we're just talking about the Malchut, the Masach and Malchut going up the level, and then Bina going below that same Masach, not the separate Masach of the Partsuf. That's again something else to ask. Um, between the upper three and the lower seven, Bina. Okay. So, desire and kindness in the upper three sphere in every capacity. Wait a second. In the upper three spherot, in every situation that they may be in, in every capacity, every partsuf, every world, every sphera, the upper three spherot, it's all about chafetz chesed, desire and kindness. There's no tzimtzum, no space, no limitation, no olam, shana, nefesh, no time, person, or soul. There's nothing, no, it's just oneness beyond the oneness, uh, any, beyond, unlike any oneness in the physical perceivable universe. So therefore, the three upper spherot teach of spirituality and of the father and the mother, the upper father and mother. So spirit, three, what are the three upper spherot, Keter Chochma Bina, they are spirituality, pure spirituality. It also have to do with the upper father and mother, meaning, again, the father and mother in a full 10 state of uh, 10 spherot. So they're they're up above. They're about pure spirituality. With no, it's all about chafetz chesed. So this characteristic of chafetz chesed dresses the arach anpin from its mouth to its chest. Chafetz chesed. There's iron kindness in Hebrew. The chest is chaze. So it's similar to the word for seer or visionary chose. The chest from below to above only comes to teach about revelations. Uh, in other words, you have the rib cage. And you have the heart and the lungs in the human parable, the parable of the physical world in the human body, that from above to below, it's about revelation, the same way that the, the, you have the covered organs of the heart and the lungs, then you have the revealed organs of the, the lower, um, below the uh, ribcage, the kishkis. It also teaches, uh, so, so again, chaze, chest, is like chose, visionary, seer, seeing. See what is the visionary of the sea? What does the seer see? He sees a revelation. It also so also Chafetz Chesed also teaches about Shabbat, the aspect of the father, 
The Shabbat is a time of revelation, a time when there's no work. And it teaches also of the first of the Ten Commandments, Anuchi Hashem Elokecha, I am the Lord your God, which teaches of eternity. So the Midrash tells us, do not read Charut carved into the tablets, but rather Charut, freedom on the tablets, in the tablets. Okay. Uh, charut Aluluchot. It says God carved the letters of the Ten Commandments into the tablets. And the, the Talmud says, and the Midrash in the Talmud says, don't say charut el cherut. Cherut also means, mean, change the vowel, and it means freedom. Free, pro, meaning the Torah provides us with everlasting life and protection from the dominion of the angel of death. When we're connected to the Torah, yes, okay, we live and we die. But if we're totally, if they, the belief is we're learning Torah, every moment we're learning Torah is, we're, we're, we're going to be protected from the angel of death. Now, okay, that's, I see people sitting and learning Torah, God forbid, and and uh, having a heart attack and dying, or um, God forbid, uh, you know, there's a, somebody could be killed when he's learning Torah. So it's not clearly it's, it's something else we're talking about here. The what's the freedom from death? Meaning because we're connecting to the beyond, we're connecting to life. Yes, people live and die, but when we're connected to the Torah, we're connecting to the Olam Haba. We're connecting to an eternal space rather than a um, limited physical space. That's what it means. So when the King David, they said he was learning Torah all the time. And the only time on Friday, and then the angel of death couldn't touch him. So Shabbos afternoon, one day, the angel of death tricks him and he goes up to a tree and makes a noise. King David was in his uh, garden and he stops, <coughs> stops learning and goes up to climb the tree, up the ladder. And he fall, that fell down and broke his neck. That's how King David died. Um, so that one moment, uh, but he died in the Shabbos afternoon, Mincha, that's the time when the tzaddikim would take off from the world. So back to the subject, this is when charut uh, charut, the freedom from, the, the, from, uh, from death, this is when we're merit, what does it mean, charut, freedom from the dominion of the angel of death? It's when we're merit, the state of chafetz, chasadim mechusim, hidden kindness is when the Israelites camped at the foot of Mount Sinai in a state of total unity, like one man with one heart. Then the vessels were only bestowing mashpia, and it followed naturally that the Israelites could receive the Torah and thus eternity. So this is the characteristic of the upper three spheres of understanding uh, Bina. Bina, which is desiring kindness, hafetz chesed. This particular masach that we said that ascended from the mouth to the eye sockets in Arachan Pin, from Malchut going up uh, in the head of Arachan Pin up to the eye sockets. So this, despite the fact that this masach, is, we're on the level of only two sfirot, uh, Chochmah and Bina, the screen ascends just below Chochmah. Uh, in a, so now we have only Keter and Chochmah found in every level in the head of Arachan Pin. So we have the... Uh, every every part of what do you mean every level in the head you have the level of the eyes and the ears and the nose and so forth so again this particular masach which ascends from the mouth to the eye sockets even though at this place we only have two spherot I believe um, only Keter and Chochmah. Sorry, we only have Keter and Chochmah because Bina went below. So the screen will ascend just below Chochmah in Arachan Pin, just below the eye sockets. Here, so now we have above, we'll have Keter and Chochmah, the eyes and the and the cranium. Um, that's the eye sockets are like Bina and the uh, and the ears also. I have to check which is exactly which, but basically. Um, Let's say the eye sockets are um, Keter's the head, Chochme is the eyes. So now, so now when it ascends to this level, Malchut ascends, the mouth goes, the Malchut in the mouth ascends, then, then Bina is going to go down. So we're going to only have Keter and Chochme in the head of Arachanti. Meaning that this in this state, we only have two lower levels of soul, Nefesh and Ruach. Keter is associated with Nefesh and Chochme is associated with Ruach. Because there are five levels of soul from below to above, nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaye, and yechida. Nefesh, the physical soul, the, the soul in the blood, ruach, a spiritual soul, the wind, breath, soul of, soul of the winds, um, the, the higher level. Then there's uh, 
spirit, I guess, and the neshama is the higher than that, it's the Jewish soul, it's the soul, the, the soul of breath. And then you have the surrounding lights of, of, of Chaya and Yechida, the, the, uh, the five hires. So the, there's, a, there's a principle in Kabbalah, we have a, a corresponding uh, inverse correspondence between lights and vessels. So the vessel of Chochmah, the vessel of Keter is going to draw the lowest light. The vessel of Chochmah is going to draw the Nefesh. And then the vessel of Chochmah is going to draw a higher light or higher level of soul, same thing, called Ruach. Um, and so the just open parentheses here. So the idea is we're not supposed to be spiritual all the time. There's angels flying around the wings, you know, not uh, you know, not sleeping, not eating, just not dealing, being a hermit somewhere with my shas, you know. But uh, it has to do with, we're supposed to be involved in the world. And so when we're involved in the world, the lower levels, the gashmias, the physicality draws the, the higher levels of spirituality. So, um, so that's what he means when he says that in this state, we only have two lower levels of soul, nefesh and ruach, because of the inverse correspondence between these lights, meaning levels of soul, and vessels, meaning spherot. So it follows that the body also has nefesh and ruach at this time. Um, because we're talking about, that's the place we're talking about. Even though the head bestows the nefesh and ruach to the body, the body is now on the letter of the upper three spherot of Bina, so it's not limited because the body ascended, remember? Malchud and the rest of this, this left seven lower are ascending to the upper. So this is because the quality of concealed kindness, Chasadim Chusim, is ruling there. And with concealed kindness, there's no tzimtzum, like we said before. In other, in other terms, there are no limits in the will to bestow. This is the first characteristic of the upper three spherot of Bina. Now, the other characteristic of the seven lower spherot of Bina, this is when the Masach ascends from the mouth, Malchut, up to the eye sockets and uh, above Bina, in the head of Arachanpin. Thus, it follows that in this place, we only have Nefesh and Ruach because of the inverse correspondence. Thus, this Masach now limits the illumination of Chokhmah, Herat, Chokhmah. Uh, the, the Herat Chochmah is the illumination of wisdom, the influence of God's light, giving from above to below, filling the lower spherot and parts of him with this light of, of, of bestowal, of Ashba. So this being so, Yisrael Saba and Tavuna, we call Yasut, are now in a completely different state. Okay, we talked about Bina, uh, Bina going up. So, but we said we were talking about all of the Abba Ima in the 10th Sefirot and the, low, and the lower seven of them, the parts of Yisrael, Sab, and Tavuna, Israel, the grandfather, and Reason are now in a different state. We said they were all ascending up to the head of Arachan Pin, not just Malchud. All these parts of him are ascending because they're in the lower seven. We said the lower seven are going up. When Malchud ring, brings up the level, then they're going to... Um, I, I got lost. So I'll just read what he said. Yisrael Sab and Tavuna are now in a different state because apparently they ascended together with the Malchut. Um, uh, uh, the lower set, okay, we're ah, because we're talking about not just the lower seven of Arachanpin, we're talking about the lower, all the Sfirot and Abba Ima, Yisrael Sab and Tavuna and Malchut. They're all in, in Zaranpin and Nukfa. They're all uh, going to, these levels are ascending all at once. In every part of the level ascends. In, every, in Yisrael Saba, the lower uh, Malchut is going up to Bina. In Tavuna, Malchut is going up to Bina. In Chaba, Malchut is going up to Bina. In every, in every level. So when all of these parts of him ascend in a mirror reflection of this of the Simpsom Sheni, uh, again, the second Simpsom where Malchut goes up to Bina, uh, brings the level of Malchut up and then causes Bina to ascend below, descend below. When that happens, then this, this ascent puts all of the spherot in a completely different state. What are they? Why do we do Tzimtzum Sheni? It's a limitation, but the idea is to bring Malchut up so she can become, receive the, these lights of Chafetz Chesed, these Chasadim Chusim, concealed kindnesses, and thus be full in a state of Gadlut. So Yisro Sabat Tvuna are also ascending to become in a state of Gadlut. Gadlut, again, is when there's no work or toil. It's when Chochmah has a Masach, because when Chochmah has a Masach, when it, the Chochmah, uh, the divider goes up to wisdom, Chochmah, then it's a state, in a state of illumination, Herat Chochmah. This is limits, and this going up would limit Yasut, Yisro Sabin Tavuna, 
the seven lower spheres of Bina. However, the limitation does not happen with regards to the vessels. For from the perspective of the vessels, there's no difference between the upper three and the lower seven spheres of Bina. They're all vessels of Bina, meaning they're all influenced, giving hashpa'ah. The limitation happens because the part two from parts of of Zeranpin and Nukva are situated in the lower seven spheres of Bina. And Zeranpin and Nukva need illumination of Chochmah, the Herat Chochmah. This is because Zeranpin and Nukva, the two lower parts of Fim, remember there were five. So this Zeranpin and Nukva, situated from the navel and below in Arachanpin, are also in the, they're now in the three lower worlds of separation because in the, from the navel and below in Arachanpin, we have the world, worlds of um, Berea, creation, Yitzira, formation, and Asiya, formation on the level of worlds. So for this, so Zeran, Pin, and Nukva, if they're from the navel and below, they're in the lower worlds of separation, the three lower worlds. Um, and for this reason, the seven lower spheres of Bina are also limited. And they can't receive the wholeness of the concealed kindness in the upper three spheres of Bina. This is true even though here the vessels, the upper three and the lower seven are the same vessels. Okay. Everything clear, Eliakim? You got it. Okay, now um, let's listen to Mikhail. אפילו שהראש משפיע נפש רוח לגוף, הגוף החלק הגר דבינה לא מוגבל. כי התכונה ששולטת שם זה חסדים חוסים, ועל חסדים חוסים לא פועל צמצום. הרצון להשפיע לא פועל צמצום. When the world to bestow there's no constriction. That's the first characteristic of the upper three sort of being. So the other aspect of the seven lower spirit of Bina, when the mouth goes up to eyes, in the head of earth, at that time we'll only have the two upper levels of soul, like we said before, because the inverse correspondence between the spherot and the levels of soul, they're the lights. So when there's a masach in the eye sockets, that's going to limit the herat chokhmah, the illumination of wisdom, from above to below. So Yasut, Yasur Sab and Tivuna are going to be in a completely different state. So Zat to Bina is basically your soul Sab and Tivuna. Again, Bina is Ima and Chochmah is Abba and the seven lower spherot. So when we're talking about the seven lower spherot of Bina, we're talking about Yisrael Saba and Tevuna. I should have said that in the translation. Ah, but when we're in this upper state of Gadlut, there's no difference between the upper three and the lower seven of Bina. They're all the vessels of Bina and all the vessels of influence, of giving, bestowing. The reason why this is Simpson, because in the lower seven Svarat of Bina, that's the domain, that's where we have the two parts of Fim of Zaran, Pina, and Nukva. And the Zaran, Pina, and Nukva, they need the illumination of wisdom. That's the goal, right? So because we, uh, we have zone Zaran, Pina, and Nukva from the navel and below, which we'll call that uh, the three lower worlds, so that makes the seven lower sphere of Bina limited. And they can't receive the completeness of the upper three sphere of Bina in the state. 
הם אותם כלים, כלים של בינה, גם בגב וגם בזה. So it's the same vessels of the upper three and the lower seven. להגבלה של העליון. למרות שהכלים הם אותם כלים, כלים של בינה, גם בגב וגם בזה. אז התחתון בעצם הוא הגורם להגבלה של העליון. The lower level is causes the limitation in the upper level. אז עד הבינה הזה זה עניין של ימי החול, מוחין דחול. The Zaran pin is uh, in Bina, it's talks, it's talk about limitation, it talks about the weekdays when we work. שזה קשור לתפילין, לארבע פרשיות, וזה קשור, אם גר דבינה זה קו ימין, אז עד הבינה כמובן איפה שיש ארץ חוכמה זה קו שמאל. Okay, we're going to stop here. We're in the middle of the class, and God willing, we'll do another class in the, another, the rest of the seven minutes, or not even halfway through, but this is, this is heavy stuff. It takes a lot of getting used to the terminology, and um, God willing, you know, this is the kind of class that for a beginner, this is very, very advanced stuff. So it would take uh, time to unravel this and start from the beginning. But if you ask questions and you... You continue and you're, you're, you're stubborn, you will understand this kind of stuff. And the point is to become better people. And the point is not just to self-help and being a better person. It's not, not, it's, we need to be, help ourselves and be good and all of this uh, be refined. But that's the, that's the, the psychology, uh, life coaching side of, of the Rabbi Ashlag's teachings. Um, here in this level, I, I would say we're just beholding the wonders of God, beholding the, the, the prof- prophecy of Rabbi Ashlag to explain the Arizal in a way that we can connect to these celestial realms. Okay. God bless.